So the question today is, what would be the best diet for heart disease? Well, let's look at the things that can actually cause the heart attack. Uh, first of all, the coronary artery, okay? If it becomes clogged, that is gonna obstruct blood flow to the heart muscle, and the heart muscle is gonna cramp, and you'd have a heart attack. Okay, that would be one. Okay, so now let's talk about arrhythmias. You have a problem with the pacemaker. The rhythm of the heart is off, and blood can pool in different parts of the heart, and then it can develop a clot. That clot can then spread and clog an artery, and then you have a heart attack. And then we have the heart muscle itself. Let's say you don't have a clogged artery, but the heart muscle itself just cramps to the point where it's like a muscle cramp, but in your heart, and you just basically die of a heart attack. So these are three different mechanisms. So let's reverse engineer and look at the whole sequence of events that happens that leads up to uh, some plaque or a clot. So you don't just end up with plaque. You, end, you start with inflammation, okay? So we have some type of damage going on in the wall of this coronary artery. Then the body starts accumulating cholesterol, uh, protein, and calcium as a Band-Aid, okay? And so you start developing placking. You can also develop a clot. And then when it gets big enough, it can either dislodge or just stop the flow of the artery. And then we, don't, we no longer have oxygen to the muscle tissue. So what causes inflammation uh, or oxidation is high levels of insulin usually, okay? And also low nutrients. It's a deadly combination. It's the nutrients, specifically the antioxidants, that protect the tissue against the oxidation or inflammation. So if you don't consume enough vegetables to get your vitamin E or your vitamin C or foods that have the B complex, then you set yourself up for more damage in the artery. So we wanna make sure that your diet is not high in insulin, okay? That's number one. So of course we wanna get rid of the refined sugars and the refined carbohydrates, okay? And how do we get our antioxidants? A lot of vegetables will do it. Okay, so as far as the B complex goes, because the B vitamins are in a lot of foods, but if you're consuming the refined sugars and carbs, that's going to deplete the B vitamins. Think about when you buy a food with flour, um, why do they enrich it with B vitamins? Because when they refine the flour, they take out the B vitamins. And so when you consume that flour without the B vitamins, you basically, you create a deficiency of more B vitamins because it takes those B vitamins to metabolize that carbohydrate. Okay, the more carbohydrates you consume, the more B vitamins you need to metabolize that. Consuming a lot of refined grains and sugars depletes the B vitamin complex. All right, now let's talk about arrhythmias. What nutrients control the rhythm of the heart? Electrolytes, okay? Specifically, potassium and magnesium. So what foods contain potassium and magnesium? You guessed it. Vegetables, things like avocado, leafy green. Anything leafy green would have magnesium in it. And it just so happens that both of these minerals are in vegetables. So if you're not consuming any vegetables and you're consuming a lot of, again, refined carbohydrates, you set yourself up for depleting the electrolytes. And by the way, when you develop insulin resistance, you, you don't absorb potassium or magnesium that well. So that can exaggerate the problem. All right, let's talk about the heart muscle itself. Let's say you don't have a clogged artery, but you are very low in vitamin E, okay? Vitamin E has a very specific purpose of increasing oxygen in the heart muscle itself. But if you're low in vitamin E, the heart has to work harder and it will have a tendency to cramp up. And this could create angina and lead to a heart attack. A vitamin B deficiency will also do it as well. So you need vitamin B and vitamin E for the heart muscle. And by the way, vitamin E as an antioxidant uh, protects the lining of the artery, okay? So it's a very protective nutrient. And I mentioned this before, the way that you become deficient in vitamin E and in vitamin B is consuming refined grains. So it's not always about just not consuming that nutrient. It could be that you're consuming things that are depleting that nutrient. A lot of refined grains, as in white flour, will deplete your vitamin E and your vitamin Bs, okay? And of course, you probably see this all the time that you have to consume whole grains for a healthy heart, but in reality, most of those whole grains come with a lot of refined grains, which they're saying that's acceptable, but any amount of refined grains will deplete these nutrients. So, and the problem with whole grains is yes, 
whole grain does consume a lot of vitamin E and the B complex, but as soon as you grind the grain, which is a seed of grass, it oxidizes and you lose those nutrients. So yes, it's true that whole grains do contain quite a bit of vitamin E. I mean, if you think about wheat germ oil, okay? Wheat germ oil, it's loaded with vitamin E and even the B complex. But when you grind the grain into flour, that's when you oxidize those nutrients. So uh, when you buy this uh, whole grain bread, you're, you're not realizing that they made that bread weeks before. They, I don't know when they ground the flour. It probably wasn't fresh. So they grind the flour. It sits on the shelf. It oxidizes. And then they make the bread out of whole grain. Well, those vitamins are already destroyed. Unless you yourself are able to grind your grain and then make your bread. But of course, if you did that, you're going to be raising insulin because of the nature of the carbohydrates. So yes, you'll have the vitamins in there that will protect you to some degree, but you also have the spike in insulin. So we're recommending not doing grains on this eating plan. You know, I just realized something. This really resembles the ketogenic plan, doesn't it? It does. Wow. What a coincidence. So healthy keto is what I'm going to recommend for supporting a healthy heart. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.